All right, hey everybody. Welcome to today's discussion. Today we're going to be talking about uh, anarchy in America. We are talking with uh, Henry Gujon from uh, New York City and Dr. Annette Teheri from Las Vegas. And we've also invited uh, Michael Cohen, who is also in uh, New York in Harlem. Uh, so, so hold, on, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. We have uh, an action right now. Somebody is fighting with the police and they're threatening to fight with the police. Okay. Give me one second. All right. Yeah, yeah, continue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had oh, to walk no, away. No, no, no. Uh, please. Uh, you know, Henry is on scene and he is, uh, uh, he's uh, uh, recording everything in live, uh, you know, in live action. And uh, so hopefully we will see. Again, if you uh, want to hear more, please comment in the comment section. Uh, we are taking uh, live discussions with, uh, with the audience on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, with uh, what's going on in Los Angeles, uh, what's going on in Las Vegas, as well as what's going on in New York and New York uh, Harlem, uh, feel free to uh, post uh, questions in the comments. Uh, so uh, Dr. Annette, while, while we uh, uh, connect with Henry, uh, Dr. Annette, what is going on with Las Vegas and um, you know, some major things have happened, but let's hold off on what happened to the officers today, but what are you seeing in, in Las Vegas right now? Well, most of Las Vegas seems to be doing okay. Once once the protests start, they've, they've so far been in the downtown area and the Strip, but they are moving into different areas. So right now, there's nothing going on in my area. We don't know when and if things are going to happen. Um, law enforcement is on hyper alert. I know that they have um, used tear gas uh, to try and stop people from converging and doing violent things. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm sure that most people across the nation have heard about the officer who was shot on the strip. Um, that's uh, extremely tragic and the suspect is under custody. And hopefully people will realize that protests do not involve violence. And right, that's right. Real world. Absolutely. Great, great message. Uh, now, Henry, you are in uh, New York and uh, the, the neighborhood that you actually live in uh, saw some major violence. Uh, can you describe what happened last night? And, uh, and then we'll talk about what's going on right now. Yes, thank you, Edwin. It's an honor to be with you and with Dr. Nett. Um, this is uh, what Fox News has created and said that we had widespread violence, uh, rioting, I don't live too far from here, so I saw the helicopters. And just a little while ago, uh, everybody that's listening, I just saw a gentleman right now in the street about to threaten another person. And behind me, I have NYPD's findings. These guys are doing, and the ladies are doing what they can. And this gentleman was threatening the police. Do you believe that? Right now, while we were live, and he was about to be cursing. They had to tell him to leave. This is what the police here in New York are going through. Last night, Edwin, a cop, an NYBD cop, was run down by a car, hit, and he's in critical condition. I think he's okay. He's going to make it. Another cop also, they threw a garbage can on him. And this is what the, the, what's happening right now. New York City, it's incredible that the cops have to face this type of brutality and to face this detention that's happening. So I'll take it back to you, Edwin. This is crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is pretty crazy. And, and uh, in Los Angeles... Uh, we were preparing for the worst, and some parts of Los Angeles got hit pretty hard. Downtown LA, uh, Santa Monica, uh, parts of the Valley, um, and you know. But we've also had some really good successes in the city of uh, Torrance. Uh, the PD has been very, very hyperactive. Uh, there's a, a, a one of the biggest malls in the area, the uh, Del Amo Mall. Uh, what the police have uh, have done successfully was uh, to block the entrance with buses, with uh, barricades, uh, so that it wouldn't allow for cars to be on the campus of the, uh, of the mall. So if people did try to loot, uh, they would have to uh, carry the loot uh, to their cars across, uh, across the uh, parking lot. So I think, I think the, the cops did a very uh, great way to make it uh, very hard for the, for the rider to do things. Uh, so let's get back to Las Vegas. Um, 
let's talk about what happened with the officer and uh, do you know the specifics okay. and do you personally know the officer or know other officers that know the officer that uh, was harmed uh, with that gun violence? So I don't personally know the officer that was harmed, but according to what was reported and Lock. later verified, there were protesters on the strip near the what's Circus Circus uh, Hotel. Um, they began throwing bottles, rocks, and so when Metro Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department determined that it was getting too dangerous for everybody, they began their arrests. Um, as they were, as one officer was doing an arrest, uh, someone came up from behind and discharged a weapon in the back of the officer's head. And that officer is currently on life support at a uh, university medical center. Um, I haven't gotten any other feedback as to what his status is, but obviously police officers are going to um, the hospital paying their um, respects and they have tried to corner off areas in front of the hospital to make sure that people don't have protests there that are anti-police. Uh, another gentleman who decided to take uh, another more violent approach to the protests, apparently had lots of weapons on board. Um, he got in front of our federal court building here in Las Vegas. Uh, he would not put down his weapon, uh, appeared to be reaching for another weapon, and he was dressed in body armor, and the police uh, ended up shooting him. He is dead. And I would caution everybody, protests, Peaceful protests do not involve uh, unloading weapons and doing things to hurt other people, throwing rocks. You know, you can kill somebody with a rock or a bottle in the right place. So please, if you're going to demonstrate, um, demonstrate in an orderly fashion and don't go after our law enforcement because that just ends up with tragic, more tragic scenes. Right. Right. And we've uh, just joined us is uh, Mike Cohen. Uh, he is a uh, journalist uh, uh, from New York. Uh, where are you currently uh, at, Mike? Um, currently, we're in an area known as Spanish Harlem, uh, sort of near 125th Street, which is kind of where a, a lot of these protests uh, in the 60s, which is this is being compared to, uh, have taken place. So, you know, uh, unfortunately, I've had to uh, run into a room for a little while because there was construction going on near the living room. And, and, and there's also other people, like typical New York uh, living, you, you share an apartment. And they, they, uh, they had use of the kitchen and the dining area for a while. So life goes on, uh, even with what's going on in the street. Uh, obviously, people are concerned. But so far, at least the writers in this part of, uh, of Manhattan, the criminal side of it, have not affected this area, other than improving the wares of products being sold on the street. Uh, that, is, that is so far the only thing that we've seen here in this part of Harlem, is you see a lot of people selling earbuds, a lot of people selling, um, uh, you know, these uh, earbuds uh, from, from Apple stores, obviously, a lot of cosmetics, uh, a lot of Chanel cologne, so you know where it would seem the products being taken out of the stores are ending up, uh, at least uh, on some parts near 125th and 28th. Uh, you can pretty much find what was in Madison Avenue stores two days ago. Right, right. And that's, uh, you know, for the new capitalists and new entrepreneurs of, of this anarchy group, uh, you know, they're getting their supplies from uh, looting, obviously. And in, you know, and uh, you know, we've seen uh, in social media, Twitter, Facebook, where it's very organized and it apparently seems that, uh, you know, that you have shot callers on social media describing what's going on and, and, uh, and talking on, on social media what the police scanners are telling them. Uh, so Henry, you are a former NYPD. Uh, can you verify that uh, these looters and rioters are getting information from uh, social media as where the vulnerable areas are to go to? Yes, they are. Right now, what the information we're getting from uh, sources 
is that they're using a sophisticated way. They're using uh, two-way radios and they have scanners. There's even scanners that you can download on your phone and they're listening in on the cops to see what area. And when things are going down, they'll let people, you know, their people know the cops are doing this and they move around. They're very organized. I got to tell you guys that what I noticed also is that they are not too, here in my area, I don't think they're being with, uh, you know, with sources from the outside, like a George Soros type. These folks here are just young people who are bored from the coronavirus being locked up and they had an opportunity to loot. There's a lot, my area is very condensed. Uh, the borough of the Bronx, it's a million people. My area, it's a good 175,000. And right now the police last night, you could, sh you could see in videos that they were overrun. And everybody was just, right now they're boarding up a lot of these stores. And I don't know if you can see from behind me. Uh, behind me, they're boarding up stores and that's what they're looking at. One final thing before you move on. The big fight is, is that the governor of New York State refuses to have the National Guard to assist the NYPD. NYPD is trying, but they were overrun yesterday and they expect this to get worse. The curfew was just now, uh, they sent us a couple of alerts from 11 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we're looking of another night of unrest and it could be worse in my area and all over the city. Right, right. And I'm gonna pose the question to uh, either Mike or Henry. Uh, your, uh, your mayor, Mayor Bill de Blasio, he has uh, been known to be anti-cop, anti-police. And in fact, his uh, daughter was recently arrested uh, for, uh, for, for protesting. And with his stance- Just, just a he, correction, Edwin, Edwin, Edwin. He, she wasn't arrested by the NYPD for protesting. She was arrested for being part of a group that was throwing objects at police officers. Let's okay. clarify that. She okay. was never arrested for protesting, and even the NYPD has said that plainly. It was not because of protesting, it was because she point. was participating with a group throwing objects at police officers and other people. Okay, so she was, she was doing criminal activity. So uh, where, where you have a mayor who uh, is actively telling the police force uh, to be soft on, on criminals, and his, uh, you know, and his daughter is actually participating in criminal activity, uh, what are you seeing uh, with the police? Are they, uh, are they not going to, are they going to be more of on a soft, a soft approach? And uh, if so, is that going to uh, lessen the violence uh, in your opinion? Well, let me, let me tell you, let me jump in quickly on that one. Uh, right now, there is like kind of a stand on order in which the cops are, you know, with the mayor's office and the mayor telling them to go soft. They're, they're saying that they're going to investigate. I got to tell you, right in this area, there is a formal an officer who became a detective familia was gunned down about 10 minutes from here and she was execution style because of riots back then remember with the Gardner case out of staten island two weeks after that uh they were doing protests in manhattan and this is what they were saying unfortunately they were saying what do we want dead cops what do we want them now the mayor never stepped up and there's always been a battle with the police when there was funerals for those two officers that died, which is uh, uh, Ramos and, and, and Officer Lou, also execution style. Every officer that have died have been through these, pro no, they start off as protests, end up as riots, and the leadership, the mayor, they do not give the police the, the, you know, the support that they need. So I'm afraid there may be more police, or there's been three already in the last three years that have been executed here in New York. Mm -hmm. And in Las Vegas, uh, you have a uh, mayor, Mayor Goodwin. Uh, she is a Democrat, and you also have a Democrat governor, uh, Governor Sisolak. Uh, are you seeing the same sort of uh, softer stance with protesters uh, that end up to become rioters and looters in Las Vegas? Uh, what, what are you seeing in Las Vegas, Dr. Annette? Well, we have not implemented the National Guard. However, our governor did call the National Guard for Reno, um, which to me is kind of, Reno is a little bit less populated and- Which is, is a more of a hot spot. Are, is, is Reno or is Las Vegas more of a hot spot uh, with the rioters? Uh, it appears to me that Las Vegas has most of the population and has had more continuous um, day after day demonstrations that lead to violence. 
So it would make more sense for him to issue National Guard down here versus up in Reno. But for whatever reason, we seem to see that um, they're not really doing a whole bunch uh, as far as National Guard in our state, except for that episode in Reno. Um, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department is, they are using tear gas to disperse people before things get too bad. They are trying to do the best they can, but like every city, every municipality, um, there's only so many police officers and these protesters are overwhelming the system. Yeah. What is your take on the soft stance, uh, Mike? Uh, Las Vegas. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I worked at the Rio. I, I was uh, at Chippendales for a while. Uh, no, I wasn't part of the uh, part of the act. Uh, um, I worked at the box know. office at the Rio. <laughs> yeah, I worked. I worked. At, it didn't slip that low. I did go to UNLV for a while, so I do know from from working in the casinos, from working in the properties uh, of of uh, MGM and Caesar's Palace, and, and what was the Aladdin back there? Uh, the security forces of the of the uh, uh, corporate uh, properties in Las Vegas are huge. They're massive. They're they're an equal. If you were to take them all together, they're equal in size to uh to uh the the uh, uh clark county sheriff's department and probably the las vegas police department together probably north las vegas would be the area that that would be the, uh the one that would be of most concern traditionally it's an area that that has had uh, seen a lot of protests in the past when it comes to race relations that is a traditionally african-american community uh there is almost a strange line that continues to this day in in the las vegas area i still have friends who live and work there uh, it is very different, uh, would say, let's say Henderson or Summerlin and other areas. But the fact that Las Vegas' property values are so low compared to the rest of the United States, especially, um, you know, after the uh, Great Recession, you had a lot of people moving in. So that racial demographic has changed probably completely since, since I've been there, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Now, going specifically to the way they're not deploying the National Guard, um, and, and would do it in uh, Reno, which is, you know, as you know, the best small city in the world is their slogan, I believe, or the greatest little the city biggest, the biggest, biggest little city in the world. Biggest little city in the world, yes, yes. Uh, it, it, is, it is a probably smaller police force, and there is also less corporate security. And Vegas, you got to remember, is blanketed in cameras. You cannot go from one spot of Las Vegas to another without someone getting it on CCTV. So there is a way to after the fact, go after people should they uh, should they commit the crimes uh, within either the downtown Las Vegas area or the uh, the strip itself. Now, when you get out to the property, off the properties, and into regular Las Vegas, uh, where, where where it's a regular city, just like any other city in the United States, it is a totally different picture. And there there may be areas in uh, eastern Las Vegas that may need uh you know some kind of augmentation but that might be able to be done with just hiring uh pcf uh, pmcs or, or private security right so now that we've established that america has a problem uh, america has this uh this movement of anarchy uh let's talk about how and why before we actually you know t start talking about a solution uh so this seems very well organized um you know, uh, you know, we've talked about uh, the getting the word out on social media, but things are happening so quickly, so fast, and so coordinated. Uh, why is it? Who is it? Who's funding? Where's this money coming from? Uh, I know social media is very inexpensive, uh, but when you're seeing this coordination, there must have been some time planning and other things taking place. Uh, what say you, any, any of you guys? Wow, that's a $64 million question, isn't it? Um, we had a few months to plan because everybody was at home. <laughs> I don't know exactly who's behind this, but it is very organized. Um, even my son found a video on social media showing that there was a man and a woman they were at the time. And, um, they were taking the license plate off of a car, uh, obviously their car. They were dressed in black and had their masks and whatever. Uh, they were confronted by people in the neighborhood. They uh, hid the fact that they had taken off their license plate and put on, guess what, uh, Minnesota license plate. So 
for these kinds of things to be going on, there is a lot of coordination. Uh, frankly, it, it almost starts to look like an organized crime type of coordination. So we do have to be very careful. I caution everybody that not, uh, not every protester may be a protester. Right, right. And before I, I unmute uh, Henry uh, or, uh, or Mike, uh, I think I unmuted uh, somebody. Uh, but um, yesterday I did see a, and I reported to the Redondo uh, City Police that there was a car right uh, within a block and a half away from my house. No license plate, no front license plate, no back license plate. Uh, the car was clean. The uh, registration, the uh, glove, uh, glove compartment was open, no, uh, no papers. Um, it, it seemed a little uh, suspicious to me because there were rags in the, uh, in the back seat. And there were supposed to be some rioting uh, about a half a mile from where this car was located, about a half, half a block from my house. And so I, I, I suspect that the riders were going to uh, stash that car for, for a getaway. Um, so what are you, what are you seeing in uh, in New York uh, that uh, that you know that uh, you know about planning and and getting the word out, uh, Henry? What what are you seeing? Oop, you're un, oh, let me unmute. Go ahead. You unmute me. Yeah, okay. I unmuted. Uh, right now, the problem that we have is for tonight, which will be the next night. Uh, what's happening right now? The fight is is that the governor does not want to send the national guard in, but yes. They are planning. It's not, you know, it's not like I have the rec source telling me, but this is the, what they're doing. I heard that they're moving up to 230th Street in the Bronx, which is a gun hill. They call it the gun hill area. That's another shopping area. It could be they're going to hit that, but I think that they, they may be trying to put through the social media to try to throw the cops off and have everybody or the cops mobilize over there because that's what they do. They mobilize units and they, they, they call it a level one, level two, level three. And when they name these levels is that they're at full scale and the cops right now are, they're taking cops from other precincts going to Manhattan, going back and forth. I think that they're, what they're trying to do tonight is they're going to continue in my area. And right now, if the National Guard, and I'm going to say it again, if the National Guard is not here by tonight, we're going to face more rioting. They're going to be more uh, businesses uh, being broken into. My area was, it looked like something worse than Baghdad. They had fires all over the place. They broke into two banks. They took the ATM, ripped it out, and took money in the amounts. So I heard of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in these machines. And right now, the cops are—it's just incredible. Right now, they're boarding up the businesses in my area because they're preparing for like a—it's like a superstorm that's coming. And the businesses know what's happening. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. This is getting really—if the National Guard does not come as soon as possible, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, as as a former NYPD. Uh, officer, when you are when you hear that the uh, these criminals, these rioters, these uh, uh, these looters are using social media to scan, uh, or they're they're using they're, they're scanning the police scanners and uh, uh, publishing what they're finding on social media, is you know, and I'm assuming the police know that, right? And if so, are they using uh, other ways, uh, other scanner uh, channels, and if they're using other scanner, other scanner channels to uh, uh, communicate with other police, is that legal? It is legal in New York. I don't know about the state, but New York, someone can use a police scanner and listen in. What's illegal is if they talk into it. They say hi, just the word hi, that's considered a felony here. Uh, oh. So they won't do it. The criminals, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so uh, what, what the question is, is, is it legal for police to use uh, private, private uh, communication amongst the other police uh, where the scanners are kind of a, of, of, of a public domain uh, radio frequency? Is, is there, uh, can, the, can the cops use uh, more secure ways to communicate with each other? Uh, what the cops do now is, is that they do open their open CVs, they use it, they know people listen to it. Cops do use their cell phone. That's something a lot of cops, uh, um, especially ones that are senior officers, they have their cell phones that are supplied by the city. And those are part of the city for work way reasons. And they do use the cell phone sometimes to stay off the air. They have been doing that. They're aware that the scanners 
the CDs are the, the other people can listen. So they do go and they use um, their cell phones, which is the city uh, uh, issued cell phones, and they're able to do that. So it's like a, a, a game of cat and mouse. The criminals do one thing and then the cops do another. So everybody's playing that little uh, catch and catch. So right. yes, the, the, the cops are using their sometimes personal phones, but they're not supposed to. They use uh, city issued cell phones and they use to communicate with that. Yeah. Uh, Mike, what, what are you hearing on yeah. the federal side? Well, on, on, the, on the scanner, let's go back to the scanners, okay. first of all, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, I did have a, uh, like a, uh, uh, what do you call it, an amateur radio license back in the day. And I do have the scanner app on my phone, and I am listening in. Last night, to give you an idea, normally the scanner channels for New York City, they number a couple of hundred. You know, as a father of teenagers, I've taken it to, to be a habit of, of uh, turning on the police scanner at night and letting it be my lullaby to sleep, while my, especially when my sons are out. <laughs> but nowadays, obviously, it's a different story. Uh, I'm listening in for, for other reasons because of the, the crime in the area. And I'm also worried, you know. Um, so last night, for the first time, I saw the scanner numbers on the central channel for NYPD had gone up to 12,000 listeners. Normally, it's around 200 because you can see how many people are on there. And also, when you use these apps, you have to remember the police also know that people are listening and sometimes may not exactly be giving the most accurate information. Like last night they said, okay, everybody go home, you know, that's it, it's over. And then the next thing you know, boom, at about 3.30 they announced everybody, it's over, we're wrapping up things, everybody go home. And then at about uh, 4.45 they started rounding up people who were sneaking out of the little alleys and uh, hallways with, uh, with the stuff they had stolen. Um, there's a video that I posted on my Facebook page that you can probably uh, download or even add to this meeting later on when you upload it, is uh, showing just how long the line was at Central Booking. And you had uh, almost a nonstop video of people being arrested and being brought in. They are arresting the looters. They are arresting the criminals. You have to, you have to be clear with that. Uh, they're not arresting protesters. They're not targeting protesters. There must be a clear demarcation between the two. Then there are the anarchists. So you're asking on a federal level, what, what can the anarchists do? And, and you were mentioning, uh, I, I believe uh, the doctor was mentioning uh, a video her, uh, her uh, uh, son or daughter had seen uh, that, that they were putting plates on a car from Minnesota. Well, guess what? If, if they're in a, another state and crossing a state line to go to loot or do something, let's say people, kids from California decide, oh, we want to hit the shops at Bellagio. Or, or we want to, you know, we want to hit the, uh, we we want to hit the uh, retail uh, discount stores, uh, you know, the the uh, outlet stores in, in Vegas because they think that that would be a good uh, way to uh, augment their uh, grief over the current situation uh, and compensate themselves that way. Uh, you can't do that. You cross a state line to loot or commit a crime, then that's a federal offense. And this is what the feds are watching very very closely now. They may not get these people right then and there. They may not be arrested right then and there, but if they're arrested and picked up by local police and given a ticket for disorderly conduct or looting or whatever and then released on bail and they go back to their home state, there now may be a federal warrant that will be waiting for them because that is what the federal feds are doing right now. They're rounding up all these arrest reports and they're looking for those who have serial activity because over the past seven days, you have had people who have uh, been arrested more than once and you have had uh, federal officers uh, moving along these lines, especially uh, with the Southern District of New York and also the uh, Northern District of New York, are looking into gangs and groups, be it criminal or be it political activist type groups, who are crossing state lines from outside of New York. I'm, I'm wearing a, a cap with a little logo here from the Buffalo Bills, and, and the other night I posted a, uh, um, a, a video from Mayor Byron Brown of Buffalo, New York. He was on, uh, he was on um, uh, social media because he locked down the city. He had to lock down the city of Buffalo because people were coming from uh, different parts of the United States to engage in criminal activity in Buffalo, even though they had one of the most peaceful protests they've, you know, that, that they've seen. And remember, Mayor Brown is, is an African-American community leader who's been very active since the days of uh, Andy Young back in uh, Atlanta. He was uh, one of the uh, youth team movement uh, leaders from, from the uh, uh, days after the assassination of Dr. King. So, you know, th this is a, a very well-versed uh, leader within the NAACP community as well. And, and he has said plainly that there are people who are coming in and doing 
illegal activities and doing crimes and riding on the back of this. And this is what the protest group has to clear up. Sorry for going so long there. Right, right, right. And uh, you know, we have about uh, eight minutes left uh, to wrap this up before, uh, you know, uh, before Zoom. Uh, you know, uh, terminates this this the Zoom, but we'll we'll continue on. Um, we'll continue on on another feed. But I just want to let everybody know that if you're enjoying what you're what you're seeing, please follow uh, uh, Henry Brajon, Dr. Annette Tejero, and Mike uh, Mike Cohen. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more uh, information on our on our site, and hopefully we can uh, do more of these uh, chats and discussions in the future, and maybe perhaps create a page uh, to have further discussion. Uh, but before that, uh, Henry. Uh, what else is going on in your area? Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, what else is going on in your area that uh, you're seeing as a uh, organized, coordinated effort to bring weapons for the rioters? Because I'm assuming when the rioters come into town, uh, I'm assuming they don't have any weapons, but somehow you know, uh, rocks and hammers and other things just magically appear. Are you seeing a, a coordinated effort in terms of getting weapons inside the area? Not really. I don't have any information that they're doing that. What they're doing is, is they, uh, the city officials have taken away garbage cans. They're going to make sure that that's what's being used to throw at the businesses that have glasses. Again, if you can notice behind me, all they're doing right now is boarding up right now. But with, in regards to your question, I don't have enough information on that. But they are, they, they come with their own uh, sticks. They come with their own uh, bricks. But I don't see anything like what we saw before of bricks being laid before the protesters come or the ones that turn rioters. I have not seen that in this area. But we are waiting. Uh, tonight, they say it's already 4 o'clock here in New York time. We expect now the new curfew time is 8 p.m. And we'll see what's going to happen. And we're going to get more video on it. Uh, people have been sending me videos. But no, I don't have enough information. Do you think, and not to give any, uh, you know, giving hints away to, to the protesters or the writers. Uh, very quickly, uh, Edwin, Edwin, can I jump in? I've yeah, got to sure. say goodbye. My battery is about to die. So bye, Doc, uh, Henry, and, uh, Thank and, you, Mike. and of course you, Edwin. Uh, got to drop out before I just suddenly, uh, <laughs> suddenly disappear. Great. See well, you guys. Th thanks, nice for, thanks for your you. Thanks for your Thank input. You. Uh, what, what we're seeing, we're, we're also seeing is, well, uh, what, let me finish my thought. You know, now that we know that uh, the uh, business owners are, uh, you know, are uh, boarding up their, um, you know, their, their facilities, what do you think, do you think the, uh, these criminals are going to wise up and bring crowbars to take down the, the boarding? You know, they, they, they're pretty smart. And you think they're going to figure that out or are they just going to come in with sticks and stones and uh, try to kick the boards down? What, what do you, do you, or do you think the, the actual boards are going to be a deterrent to looting? I think both. I think you're going to have a group that is going to not have the crowbars. I think there's going to be another group that they're seeing this because they walk around and they're going to come prepared. Now, I'm assuming that if the cops see somebody with a crowbar, they're going to question them before they start doing what they're going to do. So that's what we're noticing right now. They, they, they're walking around. I see a lot of young people walking around, and it may get to the point that, yeah, right now it's two groups right now. One is going to come prepared, and the other group is just going to show up with no break, with nothing, and they're going to just try to do that. Not all businesses are boarded up. That's the unfortunate for some businesses. They cannot do it. And those are the ones, and that's what they say the cops are going to try to, uh, they're going to try to bring cops from other precincts, but they're already strained by so many situations. And right now, like I said, that area of the Gun Hill area is gonna be the next area they might be hitting. Right, right. Now let me ask you, uh, Dr. Annette this. You know, I have a, th you know, I have a theory as well as uh, other people have theories where they, you know, the, the left is using this whole day event as a multi-part uh, event, you know, uh, where they're pushing to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, to the media. The first part of the event is the organized peaceful rallies in the morning where, you know, it's what, if you listen to what they're talking about, it's not so, it's not very peaceful. Uh, their, their words, and when they say words matter, if you listen to their words, it's very violent. It's very, let's destruct America. Let's, uh, you know, you know, we have to do this so this can happen. So, and then the second part is, you know, they, they do a... 
a, a march. And during that march, it seems like uh, emotions are, are, are fueling even more. And then when the light goes down, that's when you have all the vi violence and the, the evilness come. Uh, what's your take on, on those types of theories? So when we're looking at what's going on, you see an opportunistic behavior happening where people perhaps are concerned about what happened to George Floyd and are coming out and congregating to do a peaceful protest. Inside of that group of people are probably people that are either scoping out opportunities to commit criminal acts um, or frankly have some bias and hate for all law enforcement and therefore are also focusing that hatred, that level of thought into their quote unquote protest. Um, we have heard, haven't seen, but have heard that as true um, criminal organized uh, fashion, people are thinking about moving into other neighborhoods, perhaps places where they can loot, perhaps play places where they can control the situation better. So I would caution everyone, um, even if you're not going to the protest to keep their eyes open, because mobs can move fairly quickly. Mobs can have people in them that have other intentions. And large groups of people can be uncontrollable for a police force. So we really have to be careful because we don't have a police officer for every family. And, you know, throwing rocks and throwing bottles can sometimes injure people much worse than a gunshot. So as we look at these, there's a psychological part of it that's very concerning because people are feeding the worst side of humanity. And it just can be very, very dangerous very, very quickly. Right, right, right. Uh, well, we're, we're coming on the, uh, the 40 minutes uh, that Zoom allows us, but I wanna thank you uh, for your opinion, uh, Dr. Annette. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Henry, I mean, uh, uh, also Henry Grigion, uh, for, uh, for his insight. I wanna thank uh, Mike Cohen for uh, the opportunity to, uh, you know, find out what he's, he's speaking with. Uh, but last final words, we have uh, a minute left. Henry, what are your final words before uh, we sign off and, uh, and perhaps start a new Zoom? Okay, uh, final word, I'll make it quick. Uh, we need to have uh, lots of prayer. Uh, right now, we're facing here in my area a, another night of intense rioting, and we hope the, the governor can actually send the National Guard if not, we're going to be in trouble. But in the next uh, Zoom, we can talk a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more detail. Right. And uh, Dr. Nett, what's your final thoughts? Uh, the First Amendment does not protect uh, us against criminal behavior. There you go. There you go. Remember that as you do. <laughs> well, it was a, a great, great discussion, everybody. Um, we are coming on the... Uh, the less than a minute countdown here. So uh, <laughs> wanna wanna thank you for uh, for your opinions. Thank you for listening. Watch out for our next feed and uh, we will see you see you again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nett. Thank you, Henry, and we'll see thank you, you guys, uh, very soon. See you in a bit. All right, thank you.